Hi, it's mini teardown time. Thanks to uh, Andrew Perong for sending in this little LG 800G mobile phone uh, that he picked up in the US. It's from a company called uh, Trackphone Wireless Inc. And he got this for five US dollars delivered. Um, yes, it is actually a, uh, well, I believe it's a reconditioned uh, unit, but it's, you know, virtually as uh, new here, really. I can't uh, tell any difference, but it's a, you know, amazing five dollars. So I thought we'd uh, tear it down, have a look what's inside a five dollar phone like this. It usually goes for about, you know, forty nine dollars or, uh, or something like that, but they they advertise this thing for five bucks delivered. You've got to be kidding me. It's a uh, touch screen. It's got a web browser in it. It does uh, play MP3s. It's got a uh, SD card slot inside. Um, and it's got Bluetooth as well integrated. Feature set wise, there's virtually nothing on it. I mean, you know, there's an send button, return button, end button. It's a uh, touch screen. It looks like you cannot actually get into the main uh, screen without actually inserting a SIM. I don't have a full-size uh, SIM card for this thing, but uh, yes, it does have a uh, 2 megapixel camera on the back. It's going to be bare grip bones and absolute uh, crap. comes with a tiny little um, LG lithium-ion battery. It's only uh, 900 milliamp hours, but apparently uh, 3.4 watt hours. Apparently, uh, like eight days uh, standby, four hours uh, talk time, something like that. You know, it's absolutely tiny, weighs hardly anything at all. So I thought we'd uh, tear this down, see what's inside one of these cheap ass phones. I mean, you know, there's really not much to this at, at, at all. Is that an external antenna connector there? But there you go. It's got a full size uh, SIM card slot. We've got a micro um, SD card in there. And uh, well, looks like we have a couple of screws. Should be able to whip this part puppy apart real quick. Now with a real bare bones phone like this, it's not a smartphone by the way, uh, no I don't think anyone would classify this as a smartphone even though you can run some sort of app, crappy app on it or something like that, but it's certainly not a uh, Android or an Apple uh, OS, uh, that's for sure. So anyway, we expect a whole lot of high level of uh, system chip integration in this thing. I'd be surprised if it's more than like a three chip uh, solution or something like that you know I mean they're really it's going to be the main ASIC in here plus maybe some external memory and uh, you know maybe an RF chipset and that's probably about it so and of course it'll be a one board solution the LCD on this is not high resolution at all um, and we really they're really going to save every cent on their bomb cost possible on something like this. So it looks like I may have to prise it open now. There's probably some clips in there. And by the way, there's pretty much uh, nothing else on the sides here. There's a micro USB, excellent for uh, charging. There's a power button on the top and there's a headphone jack and volume control. But that is it. Yeah, no surprises for guessing. That just was all held in place by little plastic retaining clips around the outside still a bit of a mongrel but yeah this is going to be yeah a one board solution of course you're not going to piss money away on uh, multiple boards but let me i think we got a few clips on the end there still left and we may finally have it here let's uh, something's caught in that uh, top left corner there no there we go ah okay there we go. There it is. Bang. We're in like Flynn. And it looks like we've got all of the magic under a can here, which you may, uh, hopefully we won't have to uh, desolder that. I don't think it's uh, sold onto the board, but there's, you know, as we said, single board solution, uh, and the crappiest two megapixel camera possible, I'm sure, directly uh, surface mounted onto the PCB down there. We do have a couple of chips. We'll try and get in there and uh, have a look at those. And we've got our um, PCB mount uh, micro USB, as you'd expect, and uh, our headphone jack and the um, SD card slots. And there's a single piece uh, rear case with all the various uh, inserts in there for the various contacts. Now, one thing I did find interesting is that the little tactile buttons on the side here for the volume, there they are, mounted on that little board there, the tactile buttons, but then we've got the uh, 
leaf spring contacts there, you'll notice that they've actually got uh, side contacts on the edge of the PCB like that. And the reason I said that was unusual, because that's uh, an additional manufacturing step at the bareboard PCB level, which uh, usually costs more, but you know, they're probably making these things, I don't know, 100,000 of these things, so maybe the price wasn't a huge differentiator. I'm just surprised that they didn't go with a, cop a top uh, contact solution like they did on other parts of the board over here. It's just, you know, saves that extra manufacturing step. And speaking of those contacts, well, they're the ones that actually go off to the uh, uh, internal antenna, which is on the case, which we'll have a look at in a second. But there's the external uh, antenna contact solution for like a car uh, hands-free kit or something like that. I'm surprised on a phone at this little level they even bother having that. And there are those two contacts on the back of the case there in this complete assembly. This big convoluted assembly that they've got in here is nothing but a holder, essentially, for... There it is. And there's the antenna shaped to, uh, you know, form over the plastic moulding in there. And that's, you know, um, they've gone to a, a reasonable amount of trouble to do that, but... Once you do uh, actually design that, it is very low cost to implement once you uh, get those dies made and just stamp those things out. And these two contacts on the board here, that looks to be like the Bluetooth antenna, sorry, which is another plastic moulding inside here, which I'll try and get out. And bingo, there it is. If we flip that over, you can see they've done exactly the same thing there as what they did on the other one. And I'm not exactly sure what we've got there. Have we got ourselves some sort of filter, perhaps? And for those playing along at home, there's all the detail on the internal label. And for the power button on the top, you can see that's just another little uh, tactile dome in there. And uh, I'm surprised that they've actually uh, sprung for the extra little flat flex cable going over to the main board like that. They're, I don't know, pissing away half a cent there in the manufacturing cost. Maybe could have optimised that one out if they tried a bit harder. And I flipped the board out here just near the uh, power tactile button. And you can see these four contacts on the bottom here. They actually go down to inside the unit down in here. And you can see that that's obviously the uh, flat flex membrane going in there and driving the backlight for the screen. So that was just a uh, cheap and easy way to uh, press fit connect the board and uh, get that down onto the uh, LCD down in there. But the main connection to the LCD, of course, is your more traditional uh, flat flex connector up on here, which then just pops right on over like that. And that's the data we've got on the LCD flat flex, and the only number we've got on the LCD is that one, and I can't find any info on that at all. So the type, I don't know. If anyone's got any info on the LCD, please leave it in the comments. And underneath this plastic section on top here, and that's just our uh, vibration motor there. And we just have our speaker and another little chip hidden under there. Of course, there's absolutely nothing on the back side of this board, except they have done a uh, double-sided load, and clearly that's just a little uh, headphone driver amp there. And some more uh, cheap-ass, just little uh, tactile domes directly mounted on the board there for the buttons on the front of the case. And of course, you're not going to, uh, you know, get any more than that, because these tactile domes, they're, they're ridiculously cheap. They, uh, you can get them pick and place uh, soldered directly on the board, or you can just put them, in, like, individually uh, pick and place, or you can get them, uh, you know, as a complete sheet or something like that that sticks over. Very cheap manufacturing process, and it works just fine. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Some of these tactile domes, depends on the manufacturer, can have uh, incredibly long operating lives. And it looks like we can just pop off this metal can on the top with these tabs here. Easy peasy. And we've got a few chips more than what I was expecting, but, you know, not too much out of the ballpark, really. We've got ourselves a backup battery there. We'll take the label off there to see exactly what we've got. And they've got, is that a heat pad? Yeah, that could be a heat sinker. Yep. Pad on the top of there uh, that actually connects through to the metal case. So... Let's take a look in more detail. And this is where all the magic happens. This is the main system on chip I see. It's an Infineon X-Gold 213. And this contains whew, everything, including the kitchen sink, I think. Let's go to the data sheet. 
And here it is, the Infineon X-Gold 213, lowest cost edge single chip solution for mobile internet browsing and messaging. It's the first single chip 65 nanometer process CMOS technology that integrates baseband, RF transceiver, power management unit and FM radio. After successful market introduction, the second generation X-Gold 101, formerly the E-Gold, uh, the 213 now takes the next step towards bringing new features into low-cost segment. That's what we've got here, thereby setting new industry standards in system on chip. And this is how they get the price point. It's got an integrated FM radio, high-performance ARM processor, edge functionality uh, that enables uh, WAP browsing, music and video, camera, FM broadcasting, messaging, all sorts of stuff. Due to the single chip integration, this functionality can be realized in a very small PCB area, given the handset manufacturer highest design flexibility. In this case, doesn't really matter. They really had plenty of room in this side, in inside this phone in the scheme of things. But uh, this, you know, look at the main features, direct conversion receiver, fully integrated digital control, RF synthesizer, including Delta Sigma transmitter, FM radio, stereo recording, quarter VGA screen, 256, uh, 262 colors, so it displays that, uh, handles all the display directly, all in the one chip, up to three megapixel camera, we've only got uh, two megapixel here, that's 8-bit parallel interface, um, direct SIM support, the UST uh, USB 2.0 goes directly in, memory card interface, Bluetooth, AGPS, WLAN, oh, and it's got the power management. I told you it had the kitchen sink. It's all in there. Class D audio amp, um, stereo headset without uh, coupling. Then I'm not sure what that extra chip near the uh, external uh, headphone was. Maybe it's a uh, microphone amp coming back in, uh, perhaps that might explain it a bit better. Um, DC to DC converter for the uh, backlight, handles all the charging, everything else, and it handles a JPEG encoding and MPEG playback and the whole shebang. I mean, fantastic. And it's a point, pain in the ass, 0.5 millimeter pitch um, BGA device requires, they even tell you, requires a six layer minimum PCB just to route the thing out. So there you go, you can't just get this on a four layer uh, board, uh, most likely not, unless you can pull a few tricks. But there you go, here's the internal block diagram for the thing. And well, as you can see, yeah, I can probably see the kitchen sink in there somewhere as well. It's got even secure ROM and E-Fuse and all sorts of things. Handles the keypad and ah, man, I, what I didn't see here is a touch screen controller. I didn't mention, see mention of that. So we might need an external uh, touch screen controller, perhaps. Um, maybe that's uh, the, look, over here next to our uh, transmitter, we've got our saw filter over saw filter block external so maybe that's what we that's what was inside that uh, cam we saw over here but look at this it drives the vibration motor directly handles all the uh, lithium ion lithium polymer charging everything else it's got the microphone inputs direct ah fantastic another tiny little BGA device down in there lots of caps hanging off it not exactly sure what that one's doing at all Likewise for that one there, what is it, KSRBR? No idea. And of course there's all the external uh, inductors and caps around there as part of the uh, power management circuitry for that thing that was inside it. We've got an external crystal out here and uh, what else we got? Looks like we've possibly got another uh, oscillator module there. I can't quite make out that number on there, but uh, clearly we have an Intel uh, memory device right next to the main system on chip. And isn't it always remarkable how this has the kitchen sink on it, this incredible system on chip device, and the memory's bigger. And you'll notice that they've actually gunked up all around the chips around there. Why they've done that uh, could be for moisture ingress uh, reasons, maybe if it's a uh, hard type to stop any uh, thermal expansion issues with the main BGA devices there, just for a bit of reliability. And there's our transmit module there, it's an uh, RF micro devices RF7161 to the data sheet. And here it is, transmit module, it's a quad band, does GSM 850, uh, Edge uh, 900 and 1800 as well. And there's not a huge amount in there, just got a main uh, power amplifier here and uh, some filtering, some switching and basically goes out to the antenna. Some built-in ESD protection in there, which is quite nice, but there you go, that's just a... Uh, 
a, a complete transmit solution for a GSM phone. And it also contains uh, four receive ports as well. And here you go, it's got PHEMT switch technology. That, if you don't know, is uh, stands for HEMT is High Electron Mobility Transistor. Wikipedia, that one. And of course that system on chip was lacking one thing and that was the Bluetooth capability which is handled here by this uh, Broadcom BCM2070 and that's a Bluetooth uh, 3.0 compatible module so that's all there is to it but that's extra cost in this sort of phone so you can see that the, this exact same model without Bluetooth capability well I don't know how much they're paying for that chip you know uh, what 50 cents in volume I don't know you can shave that cost off that's a you know a fairly substantial part of your bomb cost when you've only got you know like four major devices here and and sort of you know a few miscellaneous uh, jelly bean stuff around here it all adds up one of these devices could be the uh, touch screen controller because that's not built into the main uh, SOC so I don't know I can't make out those devices but we've got a few jelly bean stuff around here some the part of the camera module down here but uh, yeah, nothing much doing. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed a brief look inside that LG 800G uh, bare bones mobile phone, bottom of the range phone, which Andrew got for $5 delivered. Crazy from uh, Tac Phone. Sure, it's a uh, refurbished model, but unbelievable what you can get for the price these days. And big single on chip solution. You can see how they got the price down, although this one is of course you know built up to a bit of a spec with the extra bluetooth the chipset woohoo you know you can probably get chipsets now which integrate uh the uh, transmit functionality in there as well almost getting sorry almost getting down to like a single chip uh solution these days perhaps but basically this is if you ignore the bluetooth uh functionality for example it's almost a two chip uh, solution there really yeah there might be an external touch screen, screen controller and a couple of other miscellaneous uh, glue stuff but really no big deal and that's how they get the price down on these things it all comes down to that bomb cost in the end and uh, how much they can you know shave the cost off that and shave the cost off in manufacturing so I'm not sure exactly how many of these suckers they would have uh, you know tooled up for in production but you know it could have been like a hundred thousand or something like that they probably wouldn't even get out of bed to manufacture less than a hundred thousand uh, of one particular type of foam so this isn't quite as bare bones as you can get because they didn't have to include the Bluetooth they didn't have to include the micro SD card they didn't have to include uh, the camera and other stuff and their headphones and stuff like that if they just wanted oh, shock horror a phone that just actually made and received calls they could have got the uh, you know that bomb cost down even further but as you can see there's bugger all in these things and if you can com compare them with phones of you know uh, even 10 years ago the system on chip integration these days is absolutely incredible so there you go if you want to discuss that jump on over to the EV blog forum that's the best place to do it or you can always leave YouTube comments of course and thank you very much Andrew for sending that one in spending the whopping five bucks <laughs> to get this thing including postage I think it costs more to send it to me here in Australia than it did for him to buy it and get it shipped to him in the US I mean that's just it's crazy what sort of world are we living in I don't know Catch you next time.